Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be finding the real and imaginary parts to this complex number. This problem can be found in your online complex analysis textbook. It's free, it's open access, and I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check that out. So this is 3 plus 5i divided by 7i plus 1. How do we solve this problem? So a really good strategy that I want you to get in the habit of is to get rid of all imaginary parts in denominators. So specifically, right here we have an imaginary part in a denominator. And so we should try to somehow get rid of that imaginary part in the denominator. Imaginary parts are really difficult to work with mathematically when they're in the denominator. When they're in the numerator, they're a lot easier to work with. And we'll see why pretty soon. So how do we get rid of this imaginary part in the denominator? Well, a good strategy is to somehow multiply this denominator by its complex conjugate. And the reason why is because if you take any number that's a complex number and multiply it by its conjugate, this is going to be a real number. By definition, this is the magnitude of a complex number. This is the absolute value of a complex number. And the output of any absolute value function is a real number. So the strategy now is then to somehow multiply the denominator by its complex conjugate. So what is the complex conjugate of 7i plus 1? Well, 7i plus 1 is written as the imaginary part plus the real part, which is kind of unusual. Usually we do the real part and then the imaginary part. But just remember that the complex conjugate is just the same as the original complex number, but you flip the sign of the imaginary part. And so the complex conjugate would be negative 7i plus 1 because I flipped the sign of the imaginary part. And so I want to somehow multiply 7i plus 1 times negative 7i plus 1 because doing so is going to result in a real number. I know that for sure and that will get rid of all of the imaginary parts in my denominator. That's the goal. But I can't just multiply this number by just some random complex number because that will change the number. I'm trying to figure out what this is. Not what this is, just what this is. So I can't just multiply by negative 7i plus 1. I have to multiply by specifically 1. This right here, what you're looking at, is just 1. Any complex number divided by itself is just 1. And the thing about multiplying by 1 is it doesn't change the value of the number. And so I get to somehow multiply this denominator with its complex conjugate without changing the value of the number. And so let's do this multiplication. I'm going to start with the denominator because it's a little bit easier to work with. So 7i times negative 7i is negative 49i squared and then plus 7i minus 7i plus 1. So that's when you foil this multiplication. 7i times negative 7i, 7i times 1, 1 times negative 7i, and 1 times 1. We're going to multiply the numerators in the same way. Okay, so this is what the fraction looks like after we foil everything. And you might ask yourself, how is this solving the problem? This looks messier. Well, we can combine like terms in both the numerator and the denominator. And what I mean by that is you can group together the real parts and the imaginary parts together in both the numerator and the denominator. So what is the real part in the numerator? Well, I see a three here, but I should also mention, I noticed that there's an I squared here and an I squared there. Keep in mind that I squared is negative one. So negative 21 I squared is just positive 21. What you're looking at in that purple circle is just 21, but it's just written in a weird way. So 
there are two terms in the numerator that are real numbers or the real part, 21 and three. And so when you add those together, you get 24. What about the imaginary part in the numerator? Well, I see negative 35i plus 5i, which is negative 30i. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the denominator. So negative 49i squared is just positive 49, plus one is 50. And then seven i minus seven i, they just cancel each other out, and that's zero i. So there is no imaginary part. And that was the goal. That's what we were trying to do. We were trying to get the imaginary part out of that denominator. And doing so just makes it so much easier to figure out what you're looking at. So as I said earlier, imaginary parts in numerators are a lot easier to work with mathematically. And you might notice that we can separate this fraction into two fractions, 24 over 50 minus 30 over 50i. And to be specific, I'm gonna put this subtraction symbol as an addition symbol and I'll put a negative 30 in the numerator. That way you can clearly see that the real part is 24 over 50 and the imaginary part is negative 30 over 50, which is just negative six. And I'm sure you can simplify these fractions, but I don't really care about doing that. We can let the high schoolers do that, right? Anyways, thanks everyone and I'll see you in the next video.